We need to put on. Ah. Hi, everyone. I'd like to introduce our next three speakers who are jointly delivering our final 30-minute talk of the web conference, Ivan Sherpov, Joe Jackson, and Fran Seftel. Originally from Hello. South Africa, Fran Seftel is an EFL and CLIL teacher at Colegio do Ave in Guamaydas in Portugal. Excuse my pronunciation. She has many years of experience at all levels, but her special interest is teaching children through a more holistic approach, integrating English into the children's daily learning and play routine. Jo Jackson is a primary school teacher who has been working at the English-speaking play school in Ulu, Finland since 2005. She is the international coordinator of the Erasmus Plus Project's Playing Ever After and Ready, Steady, Play, both focusing on learning English through play. Ivan Sherpov is the coordinator of the Such Fun program for playful EFL learning at 12 primary schools in Den Bosch, the Netherlands. She's also an experienced primary school teacher. In the last decade, she has moved from general teaching to teaching English through play, music, and drama. So without further ado, take it away, Ivan, Joe, and Fran. It's an international project between Finland, Portugal, the Netherlands and Slovenia, funded by Erasmus+. Plus. In this webinar, we will share with you how this project affected our way of teaching and the way our pupils applied English in free play. We will also share our methodology and resources with you. All materials, stories, songs, lesson plans are all available and free to access online. And we will share the link with you at the end of the presentation. So if you don't stick around, you get nothing. <laughs> uh, before we start, we would like to introduce you to the background of our project. So back in 2016, uh, we met in Turku at an Erasmus Plus contact seminar and the four of us, as you can see there's a fourth member of our team, Nina from Slovenia, we were all English teachers but working in very, very different situations. So Fran in Portugal had three hours a week to teach English. Myself, I'm working in a 50% bilingual school, so half of our staff are native English speakers, so there's a lot of English going on. Uh, Iran's school was working with only an hour a week and poor Slovenia only had half an hour. So we were teachers working in very different schools in very different situations, but we were all language teachers wanting to improve the reach of our lessons. So we were looking to find a way of increasing the effect a teacher had even after they'd left the classroom. So we would now like to tell you the aims of the project that we started. Okay, so, oops, sorry, got that wrong. Okay, so um, when we met at the seminar, we were all interested in helping language teachers maximize exposure to and use of English in both structured learning situations and free play. So with this idea in common, we formulated our aims for the project, which as you can see on the slide, uh, were to motivate young learners to use English more independently in free play to support language development through stories and increase confidence, cultural awareness and knowledge of the world, and then increase to make sure that English was visible um, within the whole of the learning environment. We started off with asking our uh, pupils to design a monster. Uh, so here you see the winning monsters of our mascot competition. In the Netherlands, we um, there was a boy cre creating Zep. In Portugal, Bolota in Slovenia, Mia, and in Finland, Sisu. Um, uh, at the top, you see um, uh, how the teachers, when they were in Finland, uh, were brainstorming about characteristics um, of each of the monsters, and they created a background story. And we used those stories to introduce the project uh, to our pupils. We chose monsters, not humans or animals, um, because we wanted to encourage creativity and fantasy within play. Monsters are great for teaching colors, body parts, um, emotions, um, shapes, and so on. So that's why we chose them. 
So the four monsters w were involved in four stories that we wrote for our project. And the themes that we covered included transport, forest animals, fairy tale characters, and music. And the stories were written in rhyme, as this is a great way to get children to pick up and use new, vo new vocabulary with correct pronunciation. And the stories took place in each of the four partner countries. So the first was Zep's Monster Party, which was set in the Netherlands and featured the monsters coming for carnival and focused on the methods of transport they used to get there. The second story was Sisu's Reindeer Search, set in Finland, and included the characters looking for Sisu's missing friend reindeer and meeting various forest animals along the way. Then we went to Portugal for our third book, Bolotta's Treasure Hunt, in which Bolotta had enlisted the help of his fairy tale friends to arrange a surprise for his friends when they visited his castle in Gimaraish. And then the final book in the series was Miha's Birthday Band, set in Slovenia, and the friends travelled across the country looking for the perfect instruments to play at his birthday party. So um, in this project, we try to use a holistic approach throughout to encourage language and play through our own stories. But we also believe that this project could be used with any stories and in any educational setting. All developmental areas are integrated around a unifying theme to which all activities are connected, which um, the writer Van Kijk in concludes is the best choice for structuring a curriculum for early years education. Um, to encourage exploring the language and content associated with the story, we focused on a number of key areas that you can see in the middle of the slide uh, that Sandy Morale and Gail Ellis refer to. Um, the creative area uh, relates to exploring with all the senses and experiencing music, art, drama and role play. The physical area uh, refers to using um, and controlling their bodies and their senses knowledge and understanding of the world, um, exploring their home, school, local community, and the wider world. Um, communication, obviously, was used throughout uh, as a tool and a goal. Um, and all of this also supports their personal, social, and emotional development. And some of our activities also focused on problem solving, reasoning, and numeracy. Um, the themes emerged from the stories and the lesson resources uh, and the lessons and resources integrate areas like language, sciences, movement, music, drama, art, numeracy and play, the, the areas that you can see on the third part of the slide. And this approach, why did we choose this approach? We thought it was ideally suited to reinforcing language and content in many different key areas and encouraging students to explore the world in and beyond the classroom. Um, it respects, we found that it respected individual differences in development and progress in, at different rates. And it develops a variety of skills in different areas and encourages dynamic growth in all developmental areas. Um, the activities uh, encourage multi-sensory exploration with lots of opportunities for hands-on learning, uh, like building and making things, manipulating, moving, singing, dancing, and so on. It, very, very hands-on and very um, practical. Okay. So with this uh, approach in mind, we decided to uh, set up um, areas in the classrooms where children could play with, as you see, costumes, uh, mascots, uh, we created headbands for them, and of course there was the story, the very first story that we used was uh, Zep's Monster Party, as Joe already told. And uh, the, we thought, okay, now the children can play in these areas and they will uh, start exploring the language that we um, used in the books and that we used in our uh, English classes. However, somehow that didn't work. <laughs> so we decided um, um, that we needed to, to find another opportunity um, to encourage them not to use only some words in English and their own language mostly. Uh, but uh, start using um, short phrases and sentences. Um, we felt the children were too um, um, teacher orientated, and so and the play was too teacher led, and uh, there was too little integration of English uh, in pre-play. So obviously something wasn't working quite as well as we'd hoped it would, but. 
We then went to Portugal on one of our transnational meetings and we had a fantastically inspirational training session with Sandy Morrell, after which we shifted more towards structured child initiated play based on play formats that see language being modeled in the classroom first. So this shift made a really dramatic difference and resulted in increased spontaneous use of language and words and sentences in their play. And this method is demonstrated in the play spiral by Moyles that was adapted by Morale, and you can see that on our next slide, which the spiral starts with the teacher leading the child through play, modeling language and using play formats. The child then takes these play formats and tries them out in their own play. Then the teacher then reinforces and builds on these familiar concepts, allowing the child to add more content into their play. The more they practice the play formats in English, the more equipped they are to reproduce them freely and create their own versions as their confidence grows. So obviously this specific example with circle time is more related to younger children, um, but a circle time in preschool could very easily be adapted to an English class with older children with a teacher presenting or eliciting language in a more structured way. You can adapt this to whatever age you happen to be teaching. So, um, we created these English learning areas inspired by Sandy Morrell in the classroom uh, with access to resources from the stories for free play. Um, and we thus moved from teacher-directed play to more child-initiated play um, and uh, with, uh, have, with the children having had enough scaffolding and rehearsing the language needed for the play activities. Um, and as you can see in the in the pictures, just to give you some examples of the activities they were involved in in the learning areas, um, in the top left uh, hand corner, the children are playing a bingo game by themselves. They chose to play it and they're playing on their own and they know how to play it by themselves in English. In the middle, they were uh, pretend they, they set up an airplane because the transport was one of the themes and the children played with the monsters in the plane um, and used their English in that setting. And then on the far right corner at the top, the children are playing with musical instruments because one of the stories was particularly focused on music, the, our fourth story. And um, then at the bottom there, you can see the children in Portugal playing with the felt board and felt board pieces retelling and recreating the story and creating their own versions of the story um, with the felt board pieces and speaking various amounts of English at the same time spontaneously. So you already saw quite some um, um, activities that we've um, uh, provided in the English learning areas, but here you see more jigsaws, um, memory games, um, all matching kinds of games. matching games, board games, uh, and there's the fortune wheel of um, the wheel of fortune of IKEA. Sorry, <laughs> I, they're not sponsoring us, but however, it is a great tool uh, to to use in uh, in these English uh, learning areas. Um, in circle time, uh, we play these games um, using the formats, and formats are certain language structures that we repeat and practice over and over again, so children get get to use them when they start playing in the English learning area, as if they would have a teacher and pupils. So one of the children plays the role that the teacher plays in, uh, in circle time, and the other children play themselves. Um, so here you see some examples of these formats. Um, in all games, you, they can ask, whose turn is it? It's my turn. And in the IKEA example, spin the wheel, please. And then you have sentences that are uh, relating to the story and um, are containing answers and questions, like uh, where is Sisu? Sisu's in the cave. And how does that get there? Sisu's going by car. It's important to have these questions and answers and not just teach them words, because then they can actually communicate uh, with each other. And quite spontaneously as well. Yeah, 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 very. Mm -hmm. So within the project, based on the stories, we also had several plays written, and these were performed by both staff and pupils in each of the schools, with music and drama forming a key component of the project's success. 
Songs help the children pick up and use new vocabulary. The plays help bring the stories to life whilst also developing the children's own language skills. And if you look at the images in the slide there, beneath the title, you can see a group of the teachers in the Dutch school performing Sissy's Reindeer Search to introduce the story to the children in a very, very real way. And then beneath that, you can see the children in Portugal putting on their own performance of Sissy's Reindeer Search, Reindeer Search for their own parents. And we were lucky enough to be there and it was Fabulous, it was a brilliant well, performance. Yes. Um, you can also see they recreate their own art in the middle at the bottom there. And over on the left hand side, you can see that they are building uh, their own sort of beach diorama type affair. They're also making Bolotta's castle at the top. And essentially in the middle is a sensory ac uh, activity which was inspired by a sensory development exercise that we did in Finland where the children are given lots and lots of resources and they were making Bolotta's tree where he lives and they could decorate it and do it in their own way. Um, and as you'll see, there's a strong multi-sensory sort of component in almost all of the activities that we do in the project. Um, there was a lot of uh, music in our project, lots of singing, and musical expression with each of the stories, and we composed lots of our own music. Um, Yvonne was very involved in writing the music and making the videos of those songs. Um, however, in the fourth story, which was Miha's birthday band, there was a particular focus on musical instruments. So um, the children really loved getting involved in playing the instruments, exploring them, making their own band. Uh, like in, in one of the photos, you see a little boy trying out an accordion, and uh, this led to like the discovery of uh, accordions in Argentinian music and tango, and the children starts to dance the tango. And um, at the in the top, there is um, uh, the music teacher was giving a lesson to the Finnish children in Finland for a um, a better based on one of the stories. Um, in the middle, I think that's Yvonne doing playing musical instruments. Yeah, in the circus and then right at the bottom, some of the teachers in the, uh, from the teachers involved in the project were putting on a play and singing to the children in Slovenia. So music was an integral part of the project throughout. Yeah, what was really inspiring is that we uh, visited each other's schools. And um, in uh, France school, uh, there's Pedro Fernandez. He's a PE teacher. And he's actually set up a lot of PE um, um, activities and resources for us to also play with our um, pupils in the different countries. Um, here uh, in this picture, you see uh, children playing uh, this story. So he integrated the stories into his PE lessons. This is Mia's birthday band. And in this uh, birthday band, the, the monsters are looking uh, for instruments and they go um, up the mountain, under the bridge, uh, through the river, into the cave. And that's where, what you see in all of these pictures, as you can uh, imagine happening there. And at the right, bot um, the right top, um, that is also um, Pedro teaching in Slovenia. So uh, our pupils were lucky enough to have the teachers uh, uh, from, the, from, from the different countries teaching in their own um, countries. And um, here you see him integrating uh, one of our stories, Caesar's Rain Research, which is taking place in Finland, actually, um, where the monsters encounter different animals. And he combined um, teaching them um, numbers, um, doing actions and, um, and rhythms in this uh, PE class. He's a great teacher. He is. He's, awesome. <laughs> He's here in the Netherlands now, so <laughs> we're lucky. <laughs> And in, in terms of knowledge of the world, there were many activities that developed their knowledge of the world around them. And um, through the monster characters, they built strong connections uh, with the other countries and the children in those countries. Um, we explored natural features of the countries, the food, music, animals and their habitats, the uh, characteristics of those animals, their diets, where they live, etc. And, and as you see in the pictures, um, the children were really inspired to do wonderful things. Like the one little boy at the top made a poster of Slovenia at home with his family and brought it to school to share. At the bottom, one of the little girls wanted her mother to make a cake from Slovenia, so they researched a recipe and made it. The parents were very involved in the project as well, which I think helped uh, a lot. Yeah. 
And uh, at the top in the middle, the kids are matching, doing a sort of kill type activity where they're matching the, the fur and the tails and the footprints to the animals in the forest in Finland. And then they're making a cake for me house birthday band in the other. There was a lot of this hands-on um, uh, activity. A lot. <laughs> so as promised, we would share with you our Dropbox. And within the Dropbox, you can find the stories in various formats. We've got digital versions. We've got videos of it being told. There are also lesson plans in all of the key areas of learning, so maths, art, music, English, PE. Uh, there are also resources. So there's memory games, masks. Uh, bingo cards, you name it, we've got it in there. There's all the songs that we've written, some original, some new. Um, there's sound movement stories for most of the stories, which are a fantastic combination of drama and music and PE. And there are also the full scripts for the plays that were performed as well. Um, so the outcomes, uh, one of the most positive outcomes, I think we all agree, is that the children love the stories, the characters and the, the music. So the effective connections are very, very strong. They're very motivated to participate in teacher-led activities, games, and free play associated with the story. And they're also very motivated to learn about the other countries and the children in the other countries. Um, they, We found that they learn and memorize more easily. There is a lot, there's a big increase in more diverse vocabulary and sh the use of short phrases and sentences and a lot more spontaneous use of English in, in free play. Um, we also, we've also found that their listening memory and concentration has improved, and we have uh, observed improved musical literacy as a result of the, the very strong focus on music in most of the stories, especially the last one. And by celebrating their own culture and those of the other countries, we've promoted, we feel we've promoted um, Multicultural awareness, curiosity, and tolerance, and we hope this is part of their lifelong learning, um, which will help them become more interculturally aware and sensitive citizens. Um, and then just something I wanted to mention about special needs. So we have some children with special needs involved in the project, and it's had an incredible effect on them. They absolutely adore the characters and are very focused on the project and are very involved and participate very actively in spite of some of the difficulties they might have. Yes, yeah, so these are our references. Um, as, as said, uh, Sandy Moran uh, really inspired us, so you can find her back here. Uh, also, Jeff van Kuyk and so many others. Um, if you uh, have any questions uh, after this um, uh, webinar, please email us, don't hesitate to email us. Uh, you can also um, have a look at our blog. On our blog, there's the link to our Dropbox. Please, if you use any of our uh, materials, let us know uh, whether it worked um, in your school as well. The stories are there, the songs, everything uh, Joe just said. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and we would like to thank you for attending this talk. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yes, please ask us questions. <laughs> <laughs> we, have to put that. Um, we haven't we haven't been following all the comments. <laughs> Someone said oh. the children look like they're having a ball. Yeah, they uh, yeah, really they is. really. Yeah. In all of our projects. countries, really, yeah. And someone mentioned that there's a lot of creativity from the staff, and uh, yeah, we, something we may not have mentioned is that the, all the teachers are very involved. So we we do a lot of planning with the teachers and co-teaching with the teachers in some of our schools. So the, the teachers are very involved in the project. And all of the resources were created as part of our sort of transnational meetings that the EU funded. So teachers from all of the different settings could come together and help make resources that would be suitable and adaptable for as many different uh, learning re learning settings as possible. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't have done it without the team that we've had. We're very, yeah. very lucky. And we've learned a lot from each other, like mm -hmm. uh, from the different uh, countries. Yeah. And, and the yeah. teachers themselves who've been involved have also, uh, their confidence has grown a lot and their language competence in English has grown mm -hmm. a lot. So even though some of them started off as, with uh, limited uh, English 
competence, they've grown a lot and felt more confident using English in the classroom with the young learners. So that's been a big bonus as well. And it's worth saying we're now actually starting a second project, which is the Ready, Study, Play part of our title. And we now have our fifth storybook, which is going to be launched here in in the Netherlands, which is where we are right now. Um, Oh, glad. I'm glad you don't think our children will get bored. Hopefully not. Um, (laughs) We have a new story with the characters set here in the Netherlands, and that will be online in the next couple of days with some shiny new resources that we'll be creating here. Yeah. Okay, and any other questions? Dyslexic learners, that's a really good point. Yeah. It's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, yeah, in terms of children with difficulties, it, it, it's really, I think they've learned to connect mm-hmm. very strongly with the, the characters and the stories. Uh, any more for questions? <laughs> Well, a lot of compliments, which is nice it's too. Yeah. <laughs> we, we'll come again. This yeah. is great. Uh, 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 thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, it's been great. Wow, thank, thank you so much, okay. Yvonne, yeah, Joe, and Fran. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, your work yeah, yeah. And for me for since I'm to us such a supportive uh, learning about doing and learning and play for, example, for very young too. learners. <laughs> I love this notion of building music literacy. That was fantastic. Um, and it's, it's wonderful to see the outcomes from your work. So thank you so much for sharing this at our web conference uh, for all, from all of us at the YLT SIG. Thank you. Thank you.